Hey guys, it's Max from Apple Insider, and in this series of videos, we put our $5,000 iMac Pro against one of the most popular configurations of the Mac Pro to test how much of a performance difference you can expect if you decide to upgrade. In our first three videos, we talked about specs and upgradability. We also ran a variety of benchmarks and tested performance using photo and video editing applications. If you missed out on those videos, you can check them out by using the links in the video description. Kicking off today's comparison, we're going to start with Adobe After Effects, where we tested performance using a benchmark sequence created by Equaloud that's about 30 seconds long with a wide range of effects. Rendering into ProRes 422, our Mac Pro finished the task in 6 minutes and 13 seconds, whereas our iMac Pro was 20% faster. Next, we tested the BMW benchmark scene with Blender, and the iMac Pro came in 35% faster rendering with the graphics and 40% faster rendering with the processor. For our last 3D application test, we're going to take a look at Maya 2018 and rendering the model village scene from SolidWorks using the Arnold engine. Here, our iMac Pro was roughly 40% faster than the Mac Pro. Compared to video editing, 3D programs run a lot more linear, so the percentage of speed improvements will apply to much larger timelines or scenes. We didn't see the kind of improvements that we got in our video editing tests, but 20-40% gains are still quite respectable given that both systems are using 8-core processors. These results are also in line with our first set of tests in our benchmarking video. Our last testing category for our mini-series comparing these two high-end professional Macs, we wanted to take a look at thermals. Both machines are basically silent while doing the majority of work, and they only really ramp up their fans when they're under a very heavy load, compared to the standard iMac that will get loud as soon as you put a light load on it. If you want a full detailed look at the iMac Pro's thermals, click the card above. We ran Cinebench R15 consistently for 10 minutes and recorded how the machines handled the 100% CPU load. After 30 seconds, our iMac Pro jumped up to 75 degrees Celsius, where the Mac Pro stayed at a very low 58 degrees Celsius. At the 1 minute mark, the cylindrical Mac only gained 4 degrees Celsius, where our iMac Pro's temps went up by 10 degrees. At the 3 minute mark, our Mac Pro was still under 70 degrees Celsius, whereas the all-in-one hit a really hot 94 degrees Celsius, which caused the CPU to momentarily thermal throttle down from the maximum of 3.9 GHz down to 3.6 GHz. This isn't because the iMac Pro's cooling system isn't capable, but because Apple programmed the fan to stay as silent as possible even under load. At the 5 minute mark, our iMac Pro was running at 95 degrees Celsius with the fan spinning up, but nowhere near close to max speeds. The Mac Pro was still at only 71 degrees Celsius. At around 7 minutes, both the iMac Pro and Mac Pro settled down to consistent fan speeds and temps, with the Mac running much cooler at 76 degrees Celsius and the iMac Pro at 94 degrees Celsius, with CPU speeds slightly throttling, typically running at full speed 3.9 GHz with the occasional short dip to 3.63 GHz. Since both of these systems are very compact, we decided to push their cooling systems to the limit by working both the CPU and graphics to the extreme. While the graphics card stayed cool enough, the CPU in both machines did end up thermal throttling after just one minute of use, and both systems' fans kicked up to full speeds. The Mac Pro did stay cooler and quieter long term. If you want to see our full review on the iMac Pro, you could do so by clicking this card above or by following the link in the video description. To wrap up our four-part series, the iMac Pro is a great value when compared to the cylindrical Mac Pro, especially if you consider the gorgeous 5K display and accessories. In terms of raw power, we have up to 50% more CPU power and 65% raw graphics performance, but like we've seen in the series of tests, it really depends on how the programs make use of that power. For video editing, we start getting results where the iMac Pro is twice as fast, and all the way up to over 20 times as fast if you're working with H.265 footage in Final Cut or if you edit RED 8K RAW footage. For photo editors, the difference is smaller, but still significant if you're working with lots of high resolution images, and the same thing goes for 3D rendering. If you're ready to pick up your own iMac Pro, we have an exclusive offer that's available only for Apple Insider viewers. For a limited time only, save $500 on every iMac Pro at B&H Photo, from the standard model up to the top of the line 18 core systems. This is in addition to the free shipping and no tax on orders shipped outside of New York and New Jersey, potentially saving shoppers up to $1,555 compared to buying direct. To secure the bonus savings, simply email us at priceguides at gmail.com and mention this YouTube iMac Pro deal. We'll send over a time-sensitive one-time use coupon code to activate the $500 discount. Details can be found below and at appleinsider.com. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.